everybody, I am Abby Elizabeth, and this is the Earthen Vessels channel. This is a channel for Christian women, but anyone is welcome to listen. And praise be to God for giving us another day in which we can consider his holy word and learn to walk in his ways. And for those of us who speak English, as I'm guessing you do if you're listening to me, the word of God is the King James Version of the Holy Bible. Hallelujah. So as you can see from the title of this video, I want to talk to you about an, a common question that sisters have when they first come to be a Christian about the head covering. And so many sisters come to me concerned and they say, well, I don't want to look like a Muslim or my husband says I look like a Muslim. And so, of course, this is a le legitimate concern. It's not a sin to look like a Muslim because many Muslim women cover their head properly. However, there are some very clear and distinct differences between, between the way a Christian woman covers her head and the way she dresses and acts generally, and a Muslim woman. So I'm going to address this particular question specifically today because I get asked it very frequently. And so I thought to make a, a video about this specifically. Now, a Christian woman obeys the word of God without worrying about what people think. So the first principle that we want to understand about being a Christian is that it doesn't matter what people think about our obedience. And God has given us a mouth, so if somebody wonders if we're a Muslim, we can simply tell them that no, we're not a Muslim, we're a Christian. So that's the first principle. Jesus Christ, when he walked on the earth, there were many people who thought many things about him that weren't true. And he didn't worry about that. He didn't try to figure out how to keep people from thinking incorrect things. Rather, he simply did the truth. And we as Christian women do the truth. So let's begin today in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3. And may the Lord bless the reading of his holy word today. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered, dishonoreth her head. For that is even all one, as if she were shaven. For if the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn. But it is a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven. Let her be covered. So we can see that what is to be covered is the hair. And if the hair is not covered, it should be shorn off. And this, this passage is written to Christians and how Christians conduct themselves when praying or prophesying. So when a woman prays or prophesies, she honors God by covering her glorious hair. And she realizes that her glorious hair was given to her as part of her beauty, which is meant for her intimate time with her husband. And it doesn't matter if she's married or not, because modesty is something that becomes a godly woman. The scripture does not read, let the wife cover her head when she prays or prophesies, but rather let the woman. So when we see these things in the scripture, we understand that when we pray, which has a few dis different parts to it, which I'll get into in just a moment. When we pray or when we prophesy, we have our head covers covered. Now, prophecy can be to talk about some vision or dream that we've had about what might be coming to pass. And that prophecy, of course, would be tested according to its veracity, whether or not it comes to pass and whether or not it's in line with the word of God. It's not idolatrous in any way. That's one kind of prophecy, but another kind of prophecy is to speak the word of God. And so when a woman might receive from God a word that might edify people or encourage people or comfort people from the word of God, then she should have her head covered when she speaks those things. 
So, praise be to God. We who are Christian women, we recognize that we are all born again of the Word. We all have the Word of God in our hearts. And when we're abiding in the Word of God, that is the fountain of living waters that comes forth from our mouth. And while we don't usurp authority that belongs to men, and we don't try to teach uh, men about things that men of God would teach men about, we do teach our children, and we do testify to the lost around us. And when we do these things, when the Word of God is in our mouth, this is known as prophesying. And when we speak prophecy to our children, or to our family members, or to those around us who are unsaved, we cover our head when we do so. So a Christian woman sees that wanting to serve Jesus Christ in this way would mean that she would want to have her head covered most of the time. Because otherwise, every time she wants to speak or testify about what the Word of God says, which for a Christian is, is just all of the time, really, that she'd have to go run and get her veil, and she would forbid herself to do these things by not covering her head. The other thing is about this is regarding prayer. So I want to talk about the, the things about prayer that a Christian woman needs to understand. So in 1 Corinthians, oh, pardon me, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and please turn with me in your Holy Bible to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. We read here starting in verse 16. Rejoice evermore. Verse 17, pray without ceasing. Verse 18, in everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So in terms of prayer, when we're rejoicing, when we're praising God, God hears that. And when we're in the presence of God, we cover our glorious hair. And so when we're in the presence of God, speaking a word of rejoicing or, or we're praising him in worship, we would cover our head. It's a form of prayer to rejoice in the Lord. When we're rejoicing in the Lord, we might be walking down the street and somebody says, good morning, what a beautiful day. And we might say, praise God, indeed it is. And if our head is uncovered, that is wrong because we don't want to glorify God in a manner with which we're dishonoring God. And a woman who prays or prophesies with her head uncovered, her hair uncovered, dishonors God, her husband and the Lord Jesus Christ. So this is serious. Verse 17, pray without ceasing. Of course, this doesn't mean that we never stop praying. What it means is that we're continually ready to pray when it's necessary to pray. So we're in the kitchen doing dishes and all of a sudden a certain person who's asked us for prayer comes to our mind. If our head isn't covered and we have to stop dry off our hands, run and find our veil. In order to pray for that person, we're being hindered. So, of course, we would want to have our head covered most of the time, even when doing housework or chores around the house. And, of course, when doing so, we wouldn't wear our best, fanciest veil that's the most beautiful that would get tangled up in things and so forth. But we would cover our hair. Verse 18, and everything give thanks. So when we're thanking God, for things. So we're in our home and all of a sudden we realize the beautiful provisions that he's given to us, or maybe the wonderful husband he's given to us, or the beautiful children. And we just say, thank you, God. If our head is not covered, we're speaking to God, we're in the presence of God, and we're dishonoring him by flaunting our beauty in a manner which is not appropriate. So a woman's modest apparel includes a head covering. And when we're out in the world, we recognize that whether or not we're married, so if we're a single woman who's not married yet, we would still cover that beautiful, glorious hair that's reserved for our husband in the future. We would cover it to be chaste and modest and presentable and also remembering that a man of God who understands the truth about Christian women and how we dress and conduct ourselves. If our hair is out, he's going to say, well, that's an ungodly woman who doesn't appeal to me. 
because she's not modestly dressed. So let's consider this part about the head covering in 1 Timothy chapter 2. And let's read particularly here in verse 9. In like manner also the women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with braided hair or gold or pearls or costly array but which becometh women professing godliness with good works. Praise be to God. So a godly woman adorns herself in modest apparel, and she doesn't deck herself out with costly array and gems and jewels or sexy clothing or with fancy hairstyles. Now this doesn't mean you can't braid your hair underneath your veil, and some of us need to do so because we have unruly hair and it's just simpler to braid it when putting it up for some of us sisters to do so. It means that we don't have fancy hairstyles that we go out and about with with some kind of little band on our head and say, oh, I'm wearing a head covering. So the reason why we cover our head is because the scripture commands that Christian women do so. When praying, and when prophesying, and as part of our modest apparel. Glory be to God. The difference between how a Christian woman does this and how a Muslim woman might do this is very clear. And so I want to go over these things for those of you who are concerned about it. Because, first of all, we don't need to be concerned about it. If you're wearing a hijab, which is the traditional Muslim head covering, which covers the head and the neck, so it's wrapped around the neck as well. That's not wrong. And if somebody thinks you're a Muslim, well, that's fine. They can think you're a Muslim. And we don't worry about such things. However, if you don't want to look like a Muslim, there's some simple things that you can know. First of all, most Muslim women cover their neck. Secondly, they wear pants, and usually the pants that they wear are very tight. Christian women, of course, obey the scripture, and they understand that put, to put on what pertains to a man makes them abominable before God. And so Christian women don't wear pants. They also don't wear jewelry, things like big earrings or nose piercings. And they don't paint their faces like Jezebel. And so when you look at most Muslim women, they will be doing a number of these things or one of them. So they might be wearing hijab, but they're wearing pants. Or they might be wearing a hijab and they're, they've got a, a nose piercing or big earrings on. Or their face is painted. And so we can see that we don't really look like Muslims. Because Muslims might cover their hair, and most of them do. But we as Christian women also are modest in other ways that most Muslim women don't understand. So I hope that this has clarified this particular matter for those of you who are concerned about it. And if your husband says, well, you look like a Muslim, you could say, well, sir, you know, I, I, I know, you know, we don't want to look like Muslims. It, you know, Christian women don't want to look like Muslims because we're not Muslims. But Muslim women do A, B, C, and D. And I'm not doing those things. The other thing I would point out to you, my sisters, it's impossible to be walking in obedience to the word of, law, of, of the Lord without running into people who misunderstand about the head covering and about other things as well. People say to me things like, are you a nun? They'll ask me if I'm a nun. They'll ask me if I'm a Mennonite or if I'm Amish. They'll ask me if I'm Muslim. And I simply say to them, no, sir, or no, ma'am. No, I'm a Christian. And the word of God commands that I cover my head when I pray or prophesy. And of course, for we who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and serve him in holiness, we want to be ready to do that at all times. And I honor God by obeying his word. And that's all. And if somebody misunderstands or they think you're a Muslim or they say something mean to you, like, you look like a Muslim, well, you know, 
people said a lot of mean things to the Lord Jesus Christ, too. And those things weren't true. And we just let that kind of roll off of us, like water off a duck's back, as it were. Because it's just simply to be expected. So we love the Lord Jesus Christ. We obey him in this ordinance. And we understand that when we do so, we're very pleasing unto him. When we're pleasing unto the Lord Jesus Christ, then it doesn't matter so much if people make a mistake about why we're troubling their head. Praise be to the Most High God who has given us his holy word in which we can know the truth. And I pray, my sisters, that this message has blessed you. I remain here to serve you. Feel free to email me if you like. My email is in the, com in the description box underneath the video. Or feel free as well to make a comment in the comment section underneath the video. May the word of God go forth today and edify many. In Jesus' precious name, amen.